Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, now they can see me. <laughs> hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever part of the world you're watching from. Welcome to Kingdom Embassy International. It's Super Sunday and we're just going to have an amazing time with God. Hallelujah. Let's just wave our hands and give him praise and just say something sweet to the most High God. Just tell him how beautiful he is. And we're just going to pray. I just want to encourage you to pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the sound sleep. We thank you for waking us up this morning and for us to be counted among the living. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all the adoration, oh God. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for being our El Shaddai. Thank you for being our Jireh. Lord, we're grateful for all that you do, oh God. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We come boldly before your throne of grace to obtain mercy, oh God, and find grace, oh God. Lord, even as we're here, oh God, we welcome your presence. Your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. And so, Father, we welcome your presence in our midst, oh God. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Have your way today, oh God. It's not about what we've scheduled, what we've planned to do. Lord, have your way, oh God. We open up our hearts to you. We open of ourselves to you, O God. Have your way, have your way in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. We give you praise, we give you honor. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, you are wonderful. Receive all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody make a joyful noise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Walking free, spirit alive, and freely moving joy. Unspeakable as one, my heart. Now I'm running wild, cause I can feel it coming in the air. Faith and love, I change the atmosphere. I'm on top of the world. I'm in the love in your love. Cause in the city we find out. Oh, 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 I'm on top of the world. I'm in the love in your love. Cause in the city we find out. my heart now i'm wanting wow cause i can feel it coming in the air if i love i change the atmosphere cause i'm on top of the world i made the love in your love
identity is fear with is and me. Heaven, my reality, his love has broken free. Christ is my identity, his fear with is and me. Heaven, my reality, cause I'm on top of the world. a little bit now when we sing this song I'm on top of the world do you know what the feeling is like when you're on top of the world imagine you winning the lottery like you won like a hundred billion dollars you will feel on top of the world because you're like among the top richest people but we have a hope in Christ that is worth more than money. We have a hope in Christ Amen. that is worth more than billions. So when we sing this song, we sing with revelation. I am, I'm on top of the world. Made alive. It's in a Savior with fire. Give him praise. Hallelujah. For those of uh, for those that know um the New England, the weather is cold right now, and we're gonna we're doing some exercise. We're ready for some Holy Ghost fun. So you cannot be sitting down. You cannot just be in one corner feeling cold because the fire of the Lord is here and it keeps you warm. The fire of the Lord can burn, but it keeps you warm as well. So this next song. It's a simple song. It simply says, I love the Lord. 
I'm going to lift up and pray His holy name. That's it. I love the Lord. I'm going to lift up and pray His holy name. Are we ready?
to the verse two again. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a tale. Everybody's got a time. They succeed and they fail. Everybody's got a purpose. Everybody's got a plan. So lift your hearts and to the Lord and live it in the shade. I'm gonna lift up praise his holy name. praise do you love the Lord do you love the Lord he is worthy he's wonderful he's holy there's nobody like our God we're gonna lift up and praise his holy name we love him he's a mighty God just wave those hands and give God praise in the house hallelujah 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 We're just going to wait for Pastor David for the announcement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We said, I love the Lord, right? I love the Lord. He loved us first. He loved us greater. What we're about now is discovering the depth, the extent of that love. And we can't get away from it. We focus it. We utilize it. We accept and embrace it in every part of our life. And in those areas, then, we can shine like the sun, greater than the sun and be loved for other people. It's a blessing to be back here with you all. A major blessing. Been gone, been uh, out of town in different cities just about every Sunday, Wednesday. Haven't not had a chance to be here, but glad to be here with you all, with my family. Touching lives, igniting destinies. Welcome to Kingdom Embassy International. Kings are being raised. Champions are being trained because have a, we have a world to reach. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. I've got two announcements to make today. December 17th, mark it on your calendar. We have a... <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> We've got an amazing night planned. 7 p.m., hang out with the Holy Ghost, December 17th. That is a Friday. December 17th, we're going to be here in the house, 7 p.m., hang out with the Holy Ghost. It's being arranged. It's something new. Come on, enjoy. We also have the Power School of Miracles coming up in January. Three weeks in. Are you ready? The Power School of Miracles. How many of you been, your lives been changed by the Power School of Miracles? How many of you are anticipating Another amazing, amazing Power School of Miracles coming up that you have not imagined, greater than you could think or imagine, that's going to propel you further along on your amazing destiny of power and love. Hallelujah. It's coming. I'd like the musicians to come back up because we are just about done. Basically, I'm just making these couple announcements and saying thank you. It's glad to be back with you in the house and let's also celebrate the woman of God, Pastor Donna, our mother in the faith here. 
and what God is going to bring through her because it's going to ignite you to more passion for Jesus, more of the fire. It's growing. It can't stop. It does not stop. It's more powerful than anything else, and it's driving us to our destiny. So let's celebrate our mother in the faith, Pastor Donna. She'll be out soon, but before that, we're going to continue praising our King, Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship the Lord. A so glad that your word is true.
said it doesn't matter what your mama said what your daddy said what your friends said if it's contrary to the word we don't receive it but if it's in his word we believe it amen because he said it we know it's done we don't have to ask him again because he told us it's done and that's why we can boldly come to the throne and say thank you because your word is true. Your word is everlasting. It doesn't change. It's the same yesterday and today. That's why we can sing this, right? If you said, I believe. If you said, it is done. If you said, I believe you said it is done. Come and worship with you me. Say, I believe comes it's you. You said, you said it. It is done. Who been left you alone? You say, we trust you, God. Who oh, we trust you, God. Just because you said it, just because you said it, oh, we believe your word, oh, we're standing firm, we keep our eyes on you, it is done, so I believe, and I believe, you said it.
Oh, just worship him, just worship him. Trust that he said, he said it, so it's done. And we can trust our Father. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when God speaks, there is no confusion because he's not an author of confusion. When he speaks, he speaks in clarity. When he speaks, he speaks in the melodies of light. Of course, it transfers to us as actual voice that we're hearing, but he speaks in the melodies of light. When he speaks, there is clarity. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. So when he speaks, the full picture might not be there, but you take the step and then he orders the rest. It doesn't matter what your body tells you sometimes. Oh, you got big nose. Oh, this doesn't look good. You are made in his image, carefully thought of by him carefully thought out by him hallelujah Lord we surrender all to you Jesus it doesn't matter what our mind tells us it doesn't matter what our body tells us we surrender all to you because we know that we are made in your image we are your workmanship made in the image of Jesus Christ Lord we thank you Jesus That's why we're here to surrender all, both our thoughts, our imaginations. And we pull down every stronghold and exalt itself above your knowledge. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want 
of you Jesus we can never know enough of you Jesus we just want to know you more we just want to know you more there's so many dimensions of you that we're yet to tap into and Lord that's why we come here every day to know like a rushing wind Jesus breathe within Lord have your way Lord have your way in me like a mighty storm stay within my soul Lord have your way My will and my way, 
my thoughts and my actions. We surrender all. We surrender all. We surrender all. Our ambitions. We lay them down at your feet. Your will comes before our ambitions. Your will comes before our feelings. Your mission comes before our feelings. Oh Lord, your ways comes before our ways. We surrender all. We give it all to you. Our bodies, our minds, our spirit, our souls, everything. We surrender. We surrender it all. Oh, we surrender it all.
every part of us cries out, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Lamb. Only you deserve the glory, glory to the Lamb. Only you deserve our praise, glory to the Lamb. Only you deserve the glory.
worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. We thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. Let us continue to be a shining witness to the world around us of who you truly are, not what religion says you are, but who you really are. Lord, I thank you that your word this morning will go forth and it will spark revelation in those who hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you're not seated already. And if you're sitting in the back, can you please move to the front? If you have small children, that's all right. I understand. It's easier to be in the back with them. But if you don't, I'd like you to move closer to the front so I can see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Embassy. Welcome to the place where God is training us to rule and reign on this earth. Amen? Are you alive? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome those of you joining us online. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about 
Keeping the right attitude. You know, attitude is everything. Amen? Attitude is everything. You know, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. It didn't say that he just loves a giver. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to make sure you guys are all with me. Are you with me? All right, I need feedback. Or I'll just stand here and keep repeating myself. I want to make sure you're with me. Amen? And I'll keep saying amen. Amen? <laughs> are you all alive? You're not all in a turkey coma, right? <laughs> We had a wonderful Thanksgiving, delicious food, wonderful family, fellowship, amen. I hope you all enjoyed the same. But I want to talk about keeping a right attitude. Uh, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't just love a giver. He qualifies the type of giver. He qualifies the attitude we should have when we are giving. He does not take pleasure in a reluctant giver. He does not take pleasure in a begrudging giver. He does not enjoy a complaining, a whiny giver. Amen? The Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. The attitude in which we do things is very important. God cares about the attitude in which we do things. The Bible says that the man looks at the outward appearance. God, uh, man looks at, at the outward, but God looks at the heart. God is concerned about the heart. Man is concerned about the outward appearance, how things look, how things appear. Oh, it looks like you're a man or a woman of God. It looks like you're doing such and such and such. You're doing the right things. You're saying the right things. But God is looking at the heart. He's looking at the attitude, not just what you do, but why you do it and how you do it. Amen? That is what's more important to God than exactly what you do. That's why he said he loves a cheerful giver. You can't, it's not, a, and I'm, I'm just using that as an example giving because people give because, well, you know, they don't want to be the only one that's not giving, <laughs> right? Everybody else is doing it. Okay, I'm going to join in and do it too. Or they give because, you know, you feel guilty if you don't. No, you give out of love. You give because that's who you are. You give because it gives, it brings joy, not just to those that you're blessing, but to yourself. That it's more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more, more blessed, you are more blessed to be on the giving end than the receiving end. Because when you're on the giving end, that is when things multiply back to you. When you're on the receiving end, that's all you get. What's been put in your hand, that's all you get. But when you're the one giving, whatever you give is going to be multiplied back to you. Give and it shall be given unto you. How? Pressed down, shaken together, running over shall people bring unto you when you have the right attitude about giving. Amen? That's just an example. God cares about the attitude. So it's important that we maintain the right attitude in everything that we do. We don't get, God, like the Bible says, we don't get weary in well-doing. Do not become weary. That means don't, don't become, don't let it start to, to become a chore in doing good. Amen? When you're serving God, you don't want it to become a job. You want it to be a joy. When we're in service to God, it's not a job, it's a joy. It's an honor. It's a privilege. We have to make sure that we are keeping that proper attitude 
in everything that we do in the kingdom of God. Amen? We want to remain divine and not become a diva. I was waiting for divine to give me a face. But we must remain divine. In other words, godly. Doing everything the way God would do it. And not become a diva. In other words, we become so full of ourselves instead of full of him. When you're divine, you're full of him. When you're a diva, you're full of yourself. <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody. This is a message for everybody. If it applies, take it to heart. If it doesn't, put it in the archives. And don't forget it. Amen? Because we all, we're all tempted. We're all tempted. We all get distracted. We all, the enemy knows what buttons to push. He knows which buttons to push. He's been doing it since the begin, since he fell from heaven. <laughs> He's been pushing buttons. He's an expert. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We know this scripture says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Are we able to put the scriptures up on the screen? Awesome. There we go. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these, by these great and precious promises, we might be partakers of the divine nature. It is our portion to partake of that divine nature. But it is by these precious promises. You've got to know them. My people perish for lack of knowledge because they don't know. What don't you know? You don't know what belongs to you. You don't know who God created you to be. You don't know what your purpose here on this earth. So what do you do? You languish. You struggle. Amen? We are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped. Say, I've escaped. Say, I've escaped. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We are born of love, not lust. Love gives, lust takes. Lust is always in it for itself. Me, 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 what can I get? What can I get? Love is all about giving. What can I give? How can I help? How can I make your life better? Amen? But being a partaker of that divine nature, being divine means that you have escaped the corruption that comes through lust. So lust, when you are all about what is in it for me, it brings corruption. Amen? Amen? Let's look at John chapter 5, verse 30. So we are partakers of the divine nature. We are partakers of his divine nature. But even Jesus acknowledged that he was here on a mission from his father and not to serve his own interests. John chapter 5, verse 30 Jesus is talking. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. This is Jesus talking. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. He was here seeking his Father's will not his own will. Amen? What happens with us is we start out seeking the Father's will, and somewhere along the line, things happen, disappointments happen, uh, things don't go the way we think they're going to go, or they're not moving as fast as we want them to go, and before you know it, Father's will changes to our will. Instead of Going about doing father's business, we need to go about and do our own business 
because we have bills to pay, because we have a family to support. Who gave you the family? Amen? Who gave you the breath in your lungs? He is the author of all things. Without him, we can do nothing. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He is the vine, and we are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. You can only bring forth fruit when you're connected to the vine. Amen? And it says that without him, we can do nothing. It's because of him that we succeed. It is because of him that we have joy. It is because of him that our family flourishes. It's because of him that we are promoted. It is because of him that we are the head and not the tail. It's because of him that we triumph, that we are victorious. Without him, nothing. We have to make sure we keep this forefront in our minds. That everything that we do is because of him and for him. Not for ourselves. Not trying to make a name for yourself. You're not trying to have your name in lights. Amen? He said, if you, if you follow his principles, he will make your name great. He will make your name great. You don't have to struggle for it. In fact, it'll show up before you even know it. You better be ready. You better be prepared when the world is all looking at you. They're looking at you and looking to you for an answer. You better have it. That's why you must abide in him. Abide in him. And he abides in you. You become one with him. That is your divinity. Amen? Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. In the Living Bible, Paul says, This is my work, and I can do it only because it's Christ's mighty energy at work in me. We can only do the work when it's his energy at work in us. The Bible says in Isaiah that he renews our strength. But what that really means is he replaces our human strength with his supernatural strength. Because we, of our own human strength, we can't do it. We need his strength. We need his life in us. Amen? It's his mighty energy at work in us. We need to acknowledge our DNA. Acknowledge your DNA. Divinity. Nobility, ability, D-N-A. Acknowledge your divinity, acknowledge your nobility, and acknowledge your ability because of what he has placed within you, because he is alive in you. Philemon 1 verse 6, I want to read from the Amplified Version. Says, and I pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge. So you've got to recognize, appreciate, understand, and know every good thing that is ours, our identification with Christ Jesus and unto his glory. Amen? It says acknowledging every good thing that is in us. Every good thing. Acknowledging, yes, I am divine. Yes, I am royal. Yes, I have his ability. But for what purpose? For his glory. Everyone say it's all for his glory. 
not for your glory. He will make your name great. People will laud you and applaud you. They will also ignore you and tear you down. They'll neglect you and abuse you. That's why you've got to keep the right attitude. Doing all things as unto the Lord and not for people. Amen? You're not doing things to get something from somebody. You serve because you love. We do because of him. That keeps our attitudes in check so you don't become something you are not. Amen? Acknowledging the good things and appreciating the good things and understanding it, understanding why you are who you are. Why he has given you of his fullness. Why? So that you can be his representative, representing him, showing the world what Jesus is really like, not what the picture that religion has painted. Religion has painted a distorted picture, and the world hates that picture. They hate that picture. Why? Because that picture that they have painted, the Jesus that they have created, beats people up. But that's not the Jesus that came to earth and died for us. Amen? He doesn't beat us up. He builds us up. He builds us up. He lifts us up. The Bible says he lifts the needy out of the dunghill and sets them up with the princes. He sets them on high. He lifts us up and places us right beside him. Amen? We are seated with him in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. All dominion has been given to us. I'm getting ahead of myself. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Jesus had given his disciples power, and he said, now go out and do Father's business. So, and I'm not talking about the 12. This is the 70, right? This is the 70 that left him later on because they couldn't, because Jesus' teaching was just a little too hard. It was a little too much. We don't get it, so goodbye. Verse 17 says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. This power, the power that caused Satan to fall from heaven like lightning, Jesus gave it to us. Said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. But let's look at verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. In other words, this shouldn't make you happy. This shouldn't be a surprise to you. Amen? This shouldn't be your cause for joy. Don't rejoice in that you have power over Satan. Don't rejoice over that. Why? Because that's what divinity does. Amen? We shouldn't be impressed by miracles when we have been designed to express miracles. We've become so impressed by the miraculous because we have forgotten who we are. We've lost our divinity. But when you know who you are, that's just a way of life. 
That's not something to quote unquote celebrate. This is just who we are. You're a walking miracle. You've been created for miracles. Miracles are part of your lifestyle. Jesus said, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice. I'm talking about attitude today. Rather rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Amen? In the Lamb's book of life. This is where we rejoice. We have been recreated a new creature. A new creature that cannot get sick. Amen? The enemy tries. He's going to try to give you symptoms. He's going to try to do these things. But when you have that revelation, I am a new creature. I cannot get sick. That becomes the reality in your life. Amen? Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because you are now part of the family of God. Rejoice because you are a citizen of heaven right here on earth. In this, this is what we rejoice over. Amen? Romans chapter 12. Verse 1, it is our responsibility to make sure that our attitude is right. It's our responsibility to make sure that we present ourselves holy and acceptable. Verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is your, it's reasonable. This isn't exceptional. It's, this is the reasonable part of your service. What does that mean? Following his word, following his principles, living the way he intended you to live, not trying to fit in with the rest of the world and do things the way the world does them, think the way they think. That's what it says, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Don't try to fit in when you were created to stand out. You're not created to stand out because You are just so special in and of yourself. You were created to stand out because there's a life within you that causes you to be different than the world, that causes you to be different, so therefore you stand out. When when everybody else is crying and whining and complaining, you are happy and rejoicing, and you are living life with With joy, you're living life with excitement. You're not worried about where your next paycheck is coming from. You're not worried how you're going to pay your bills. You're not worried how you're going to take care of your family because your attitude is right. You know that God has got you. God is the one who is your source, not your not your uh, uh, job, not your parents, not any other not any other thing. Amen. But God alone. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't try to fit into their mold. Amen? When God created you, he broke the mold. You were created. That's it. That's the only one. Mold is destroyed. There is no one. There there can't be another one. Amen? So when you were created... God broke the mold. That's it. There's only one. What you see is what you get. I always say, if you don't like it, don't look at it. (laughs) A little sidebar. I used to have people complain about how pale I was. 
because I didn't like to go get a tan. So my legs were nice and white, everything, I'm nice and white. And I said, listen, this is the way God made me. I said, if you don't like it, you have eyelids, you can shut them. You don't have to look at it. Don't try to make me conform to what, to your standard of beauty. Amen? Little sidebar. But we do. We, we conform to the world's idea of what is beautiful. We conform to the world's idea, the world's standard of things. But don't be conformed to the world. But rather be transformed by renewing your mind by the word of God. You have to wash your brain just like you wash your body every day. Why do you wash your body every day? Because whether you can see it or not, there is dirt in the air. And just by being alive, you attract dirt. It lands on you. Amen? And it's the same thing with your mind. In this world, you are bombarded by all kinds of voices. You're bombarded by all kinds of garbage and nonsense. So what do you do? You need to wash that crap off. <laughs> you got to wash it off by the word of God. Everyone say the word of God. Say, I need the word. You have to live by the word of God. Amen? Not just by every, every little voice you hear. You know, I have, I'm, people always, people have, the Bible even says people have itchy ears. Itchy ears. They want to hear the latest thing. They want to hear the newest this and the newest that. But they never bother to go back and see, does it line up with the word of God? Does this line up with the standard? We don't even know what the standard is. That's why the Bible says we get easily deceived. We get pulled this way and that way because we're not solid. We're not founded on the foundation of the word. Amen? Transform. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Not that God may prove. You prove that you are good. You prove that you're acceptable, ac accepted, and perfect will of God. Amen? You are in the perfect will of God. For I say, verse 3, through the grace given unto me to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Attitude. Proper attitude. Yes, you are divine. Yes, you have dominion, but not over one another. You're no better than anybody else. Amen? There, the, the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. His word works. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Even the unbelievers use his principles and they work. Because principles are principles. And they stumble upon it by accident. All the principles on this earth that work come from the word of God. All of them. If you listen to motivational speakers and all these different people who are making a fortune off of their wisdom, the wisdom that works is come straight from the Bible. That's the wisdom that works. So skip the middleman and go right to the source. Amen? Go right to the source. You need wisdom? Read Proverbs. Everything you need is right there. The problem is we're too lazy. That's the problem. We're too lazy. We're too lazy to search it out for ourselves. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, 
but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every person has been given the measure of faith. The measure, one measure, the faith of the Son of God. His faith. We've been given his faith, but now it is up to us to let nurture it so that it can grow. It can get stronger. It can get greater. Remember, there's weak faith, little faith, great faith, strong faith. Amen? There's different, different categories of faith. But everyone is given the same measure of faith. But it is up to us to use it. Amen? Verse 4, for as we have many members in one body... And all members have not the same office. Just because you're not an apostle doesn't mean that your calling is of a lesser degree. But this is how we think. This is how people think. The ministry of helps is just as important as the five-fold ministry. What's the ministry of helps? Serving, being an armor bearer, cleaning, doing all these different things. Everybody, each joint is supplying. Everybody is important. No position, no function is more valuable or more important than any other. So don't let it go to your head. That's what I'm talking about today. You want to stay divine, not become a diva. A diva is somebody who lets their position go to their head. They get a big head. Amen? Jesus is the head. He must be your head. Amen? When he is your head, everything else is in its right pr proportion. Verse 5, so we being many are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. We need one another. Amen? We need each other. One person cannot reach the world on their own. Apostle is in DRC right now, ministering there. He's there. He can't be there and here at the same time. Amen? That's why we're here. See, that's the wonderful thing about Jesus pouring himself into all of us. He was able to multiply himself across the globe. So we should be able to make quick work of Father's business. But the problem is we let a little power go to our heads. We become divas instead of divine. Being righteous does not make you, what's the word I want to use? Being righteous does not make you holier than thou. Amen? Being righteous does not mean that you're better than anybody else. Being righteous means that you choose to follow the word. His righteousness is alive and well in you. You have become the righteousness of God. I like what Psalm 37, 16 says in the Message Bible, really short and sweet. It says, one righteous will outclass 50 wicked. One righteous, one person following the word, doing things the way God says to do them, will outclass 50 wicked. Remember, what, who are the wicked? The wicked are those who do not believe the word. Those are the ones who are wicked, who do not follow the word. What we say and what we do must line up. What we say and what we do must line up. We cannot say, oh, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a holy priesthood. I'm a, you know, we... We like to quote these scriptures and declare these scriptures over us, 
but our actions are completely opposite. We cannot declare we are kings and then look and act like something else. Who we are should be reflected not only in our speech, but also in our conduct and in our appearance. Amen? The Bible says do not even do not do not even entertain the appearance of evil. The appearance of evil. Why? You can cause somebody to stumble. And then that you will be held responsible for on the day of judgment. Don't think that the day of judgment is not happening. It's happening. Amen. See, we're not, we're not just playing games. This is serious business. This is serious business. This is life and death we're talking about. And we will be held accountable for every word we have spoken. We will be held accountable for everything we've done and not done. Things we should have done and didn't do. This is important. Amen. Matthew chapter 22. Is this helping anyone? Matthew 22 verse 10. Jesus was talking, giving another parable. <clears throat> talking about a king who was, had a wedding feast and was bidding different people to come. And they wouldn't come for this reason or that reason. So then, when the people that he had invited refused to come, then, verse 10, he gave another instruction to those servants that went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. So they went out and just found whoever they could find. Amen? Of course, you know that this is talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Jesus came to the Jews first, and the Jews refused. They refused him. They uh, abused his messengers. I didn't want to read the entire chapter, so that's why I'm giving you kind of the <laughs> little summary. He was sent to the Jews first, but the Jews refused him. They crucified him. So he said, it's now available to us. Amen? Hallelujah. So he said, go out into the highways. Go out and gather as many as you can, both good and bad. Both good and bad. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And, the, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not a wedding garment. He wasn't dressed appropriately for the feast, for the, for the occasion. He wasn't prepared. And he said unto him, friend, how, how, why did you come here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He had no answer. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. It matters what our conduct, our behavior, our appearance, amen? It matters. We cannot become comfortable with mediocrity and just good enough. In the kingdom of God, we cannot become comf comfortable with just good enough. This man came to the wedding feast thinking, well, what I'm, what I'm wearing is good enough. It's good enough. But the king pointed him out and said, no, that is not what I require. Amen? It's not about just showing up. Are you showing up prepared? Are you showing up with the right attitude? Are you showing up with the right motive? 
Amen? It's not about just showing up. And because this man was not, a, was not prepared appropriately, he was cast out. Amen? We cannot become comfortable with just good enough. We are supposed to be a people of excellence. We serve a God of excellence. Remember Daniel. Uh, Daniel. He stood out because he had a spirit of excellence. The king recognized the spirit of excellence in him. This is a man with an excellent spirit. He stood out. We must stand out because of our excellence, not because of our craziness. You can stand out for different reasons. Amen? So let's qualify the standing out. Yes, you are called to stand out, but not to stand out for your nonsense. Not to stand out for your ability to get into trouble all the time. Not to stand out because you're the busybody always getting into everybody's business and spreading gossip all over the place, spreading poison and causing division and strife and issues everywhere you go. You can stand out for that too. Get out. Yeah. Don't stand out. Get out. We must keep the right attitude. James chapter 3, verse 13. I want to read this from the Message Bible. It says, do you want to be counted wise? To build a reputation for wisdom. Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. Remember, the Bible says you must not think more highly than you ought to think. How should you think? How, how, how ought you to think? Like God thinks. Don't think yourself above and beyond the way God thinks. Amen? Amen? It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning, devilish conniving. But this is what people do. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throat. Verse 17, real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. Remember, the Bible says that if it is at all possible, live peaceably with others. Don't just try to be contentious all the time. I've got, you have to argue about everything. No. He is the prince of peace. We should be the ones that bring peace. Amen? But not at the expense of the word. You've got to know when to speak up. There is a time to speak up. And if we rely on the Holy Spirit, he gives us the right way, the right words and the right way to say things. Amen? Because remember, our, our purpose is to win the people, not win the arguments. Amen? We're not trying to win an argument. We're trying to win the people. We're supposed to be concerned about the hearts of men, not just about being the one who's right. <clears throat> it is gentle, God's wisdom, real wisdom. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. Verse 18. You can develop a healthy, 
robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Amen? The world will know we belong to him. Why? Because we love. Because we love each other. Too many Christians love God, or they say they love God, but they can't stand their brother and sister. They hate their brother and sister. They try to tear down their brother or sister. But, oh, but I love God. I love God so much. God is the one that I love. Everybody else can go to hell, but God, I love you so much. But that's what Christians do. That is what they do. That's what they do. But the Bible says the world will know. They will know you belong to me. They will know you are my disciple. They will know you are my child. They will know that you are divine because you love one another. With all of our faults and all of our mistakes and all of our shortcomings, we still love one another. Love takes no, keeps no account of a wrong. Love doesn't hold grudges. Love forgives. Love corrects. Love heals. Love restores. Amen? Love never turns its back. Treat each other with dignity and honor. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do You're doing it to me. Those that are poor, those who are unlovely, those who are annoying. I want to say it like it is. Some people. (laughs) Some people can rub you the wrong way. Right? But we must love them anyway. We must always seek for their good. Mark chapter 9, verse 33. I'm almost done, I think. Mark chapter 9, verse 33. Jesus was with his disciples. It says, and he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, Jesus is asking his disciples, what was it that you guys were arguing about on the road. As we were coming, you guys were arguing. What, 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 what was it about? Verse 34, it says, but they held their peace. <laughs> I can just see them. They're like, it wasn't me, Lord. It was him. <laughs> right? We always like to point to the other guy. It's their fault. They did. That's what they did. That's what they, they're like, uh. (laughs) But they held their peace. For by the way, as they were going, they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. They were arguing over who was better than whom. They didn't want to answer Jesus' question. I can just imagine they probably felt so embarrassed in front of Jesus. Jesus says, what what were you guys arguing about? Like he didn't know. They kept their mouths shut because they were arguing over who was better than who. Who was the greatest one? And he sat down, Jesus sat down and called the twelve And said unto them, if any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. The way to greatness is down. The way up is down. You should know that that's how God's word works. 
If you want to get more, you've got to give more. Logically doesn't make sense. The way up is down. You want to be the greatest of all, then you must serve all. The servant of all. Amen? Mark chapter 10, verse 42. <clears throat> but Jesus called them to him and said unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. In other words, he's talking about out in the world, those with power abuse it. That's what it's saying. Those with power abuse it. They use their power to keep others down. They use their power to puff themselves up and deflate everyone else around them. But verse 43, it says, but it will not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. Same thing. Amen? You want to be great? Serve. And not serve with the motive of becoming great. Serve because you love. You serve because that's the right attitude to have. Amen? You're not serving because you want to bring attention to yourself. You're serving because you want to make your king happy. Well done good and faithful. Well done, good and faithful. Amen? Be careful that your divine heritage does not devolve into a diva mentality. <clears throat> I'm going to say that again. Be careful that your divine heritage does not devolve into a diva mentality. Yes, you are divine. Yes, you have dominion over Satan and his minions. Amen? But you are no better than your brother or sister. Your calling is not more important than theirs. They are not put on this earth to serve you. You were both put on this earth to serve each other. Amen? But that's what a diva does. Remember this. Write this down. Confidence is a demonstration of knowing who you are. Arrogance is a demonstration of wishing you were. So confidence is a demonstration of knowing who you are. When you know who you are, you have confidence. But arrogance is a demonstration of your ignorance of who you are. You're trying to be something that you have no idea of. You're trying to be like someone else. You have no, you have no identity on your own, so you're trying to copy someone else and trying to say, well, I can do that too. Why do you have to say that? If you can, do it. That's arrogance talking. Confidence just does it. Amen? Confident, the confident walk bigger than their talk. The arrogant talk bigger than their walk. When you're confident, your actions will speak for you. When you're arrogant, your mouth does all the talking but there's no results. Amen? A diva is arrogant, but a child of God exudes confidence. Amen? I'm going to give you 10 statements about the difference between a diva and the divine. The divine. 
You better live up to your name. <laughs> Number one, a diva only cares about themselves. The divine cares about others. Number two, a diva's center is self. The divine center is God. Number three, a diva exalts themselves by crushing others. The divine lifts others and allows God to exalt them. A diva makes others think that they are royalty. Well, there's two words I want to emphasize here. A diva makes others think that they are royalty. They force it. The divine causes others to know that they are royalty. Amen? It just comes out of you. You're not trying. You don't have to force it on people. They can see for themselves. A diva builds themselves up on the outside. The divine builds themselves up on the inside. A diva dresses to show attention to themselves. The divine dresses to draw attention to God. We look good so that he looks good. Amen? Jesus said, Father, glorify me so that I may glorify you. He glorifies us. He makes us look good because it makes him look good. Why would anybody want to be drawn to him if we look wretched and poor and depressed and miserable? I remember there's this one uh, clip from the movie Amistad. I haven't seen it in a long time. But the movie Amistad, how many of you have seen it? Powerful, powerful movie, disturbing and powerful. But there was this one, one part where they were bringing the African slaves on, on shore, and all the Christians were standing there holding their Bibles and just watching as they were bringing them. I think they were singing Amazing Grace or something like that. And the Africans were saying to each other, who are these miserable-looking people? You know, when they saw it, they just looked, they looked depressed. They looked miserable. And, but that was the impression. So if you looked that way, why would anybody be attracted to that? Amen? We must present God the way he is, with a smile on our faces. Right? The Bible says that the little children ran, they used to run to Jesus. Children don't run to miserable people. Children run to fun people. Jesus was a fun guy. He had a sense of humor. He knew how to laugh. He cracked jokes at the Pharisees' expense. If you read it, he did. He called them names. <laughs> you hypocrite, brood of vipers. We dress to draw attention to God. A diva carries with them an atmosphere of fear, strife, and chaos. But the divine carries with, the, with them an atmosphere of power, love, and a sound mind. When one leaves the presence of a diva, they feel less. When one leaves the presence of the divine, they feel great. They feel more. A diva invests in themselves to advance themselves. You getting the picture here? A diva is all about numero uno. <laughs> yes. All about number one, me. Me, 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 me. Look at me. I did this. I am the one. And you're just there to serve me. 
A diva invests in themselves to advance themselves. The divine invests in themselves to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? I'm still talking about attitude. A diva, this is the last one, number 10, if you're counting. A diva is motivated by greed and ambition. The divine is motivated by love and purpose. Amen? So I'm going to give you three points to prevent acquiring or devolving into a diva mentality. Three points. They're very easy. Everyone say, it's easy. Number one, know your purpose. Know your purpose. Know what you are called to do. Amen? That's, you've got to know that. Because without that, nothing else makes sense. Nothing else will work if you don't know what you are here to do. Amen? Number two, check your motives. Whatever you're doing, check your motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why? And the last one, check your attitude. How are you doing it? Amen? How are you doing it? Check your attitude. Are you doing it with joy? Or are you doing it, are you doing it for the right reasons, for the right motive? Or are you doing it for a paycheck? Amen? What's your motive? You want to get paid? Or do you want to advance the kingdom? Amen? What's the motive? Why are we serving? We don't serve because we are looking for something that will help advance us. If we serve with the right attitude, that automatically happens. You don't have to try and get it for yourself. Amen? The Bible says he will make your name great. He is the one who promotes, he is the one who exalts, and he is the one who brings down. That's what the Bible says. He's the one that lifts you up, and he is also the one that will make sure that you get out of the way of his purpose. If you are becoming a stumbling block, you will be removed. That's what it says in John, was it 15? says, any branch that is unfruitful will be cut off. If you are not being, being a benefit to the kingdom of God, you will be removed or replaced. Amen? So it's important that we keep the right attitude in everything that we do. We're not coming here because we're looking for a position or we're looking for our name and lights. We are coming here. We are coming together because God has placed within us a purpose. He has placed within us a, 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 a calling that we must fulfill. If you want to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. Amen? Yes, he has put greatness in you, but the way up is down. The way up is by vacuuming the floor. That's one thing. <laughs> Amen. The way up is by serving one another. So please, make sure you keep the right attitude. Keep the right attitude in everything that we do. In our relationships, how we relate to one another. Amen? Let us strive to make sure that we leave someone's presence, we leave them better than how they were when they came. Amen? You don't want to pull people down. We're people lifters, not people destroyers. Amen? Has this helped you this morning? Are you blessed this morning? So I hope this has helped you 
You know, if you needed a little attitude shift, I hope this has given you a little attitude shift. Amen? This isn't intended to beat up anybody. This is just to remind us. We need to remind ourselves why we're here, why we're doing what we're doing. We're here on his business, not our own business. We take care of his business. He'll take care of our business. Amen? Are you happy? Let's put our hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Minister Tyler and his nice pants. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a powerful message. Amen. Can we appreciate mom again? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. He is Lord over all. He's Lord over our finances. He's Lord over our lives. Amen. He is the King of Kings, and we are his ambassador. Amen. Uh, it just, it's fascinating. I don't know if you've been watching um, Dad with uh, just the live broadcast with Burundi. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. The impact has been unbelievable, and it's still happening. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Amen. Just want to acknowledge the work that's happening uh, because sometimes we just get in a flow of what we're doing here, but there is an impact. Amen. And we're a part of that. Hallelujah. It's added to you. Amen. And it is a part of this mission as our family. I was just watching, um, uh, just to add to that, he was uh, teaching, and I could see some of the people in the crowd just getting their, their mind blown, amen. Uh, I think we all experienced that. Pastor Dave's in the back smiling because it's very true. Because uh, when we hear this message the way it really is, there's something that happens because it's called potency. The word is potent. Hallelujah. The word has life to it, and when you get into it, it begins to explode in your mind because your mind can't comprehend the things of God. And we're living in an hour that the world is going to manifest this kingship, this glory, and we're just so blessed to be the forerunners of that, uh, that triumphant glory that's happening. I want to look at Ecclesiastes um, 11, verse 1. It says this. I'm reading out of the Living Bible Translation. It says... Uh, give generously, for your gifts will return to you later. Say that with me. My gift, it'll return to me later. <laughs> Do you know when God gives back, it's never the same that you gave? <laughs> Hallelujah. His math doesn't work the same way uh, man's math works. We give and he releases. He gives you an entire city. He gives you an entire nation. Things happen. Opportunities come. He gives you a business opportunity. Hallelujah, comes in various forms. That's why we need not ever lose sight of the king's prerogative because we're after his glory in this world. Can you say amen? We're here to bring his glory on this earth so that the people can benefit from it. Verse 4, it says this, if you wait for a perfect condition, you'll never get anything done. <laughs> Isn't that true of people? Hallelujah. You see Christians many times, they just go about their business and it's, it's like mom said, they're, they're suffering. Why, why would we live this abundant life and suffer? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't align with the king. Hallelujah. We're not born again, as dad always says, to suffer again. We're here to live the life that he's called us to live. Amen. We have a purpose and we have a pursuit and that is the king's message in all the world. So just keep that in mind because we're having an impact. Hallelujah, this is the 90th country. I just don't want to lose sight because we are in a house of greater glory. And it is amazing what's happening around the world. But here locally, we're blessed and we're training up leaders. Amen? We're leaders in this house. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Hallelujah. You're a leader. Amen. Those of us that are watching online, you are a leader. You are blessed with the Father's best. And we want to continue to give. We want to continue to sow seed. Because like mom said, as it goes down, things come up. Amen. You sow seed into the ground. You don't hold seeds in your hand. You release them. A farmer goes out into the field and releases them. Because not every seed is sown. Many times you release seed and it goes in different places. Sometimes the bird comes, comes down and gets it. But as we are faithful in those things, it says, my gift will return to me. Hallelujah. It's the faithfulness that's very key. 
we want to give uh, this morning. Amen. We're so blessed by the ministry here. And those of you that are in-house, of course, we know uh, if you want to give by way of cash or check, uh, we have the envelopes available for you in the back of the chairs. And those of us, uh, also we have Christina in the front with the square option for you. Amen. And those of you that are online, you want to go to Christlove.org and make sure you click the donate button uh, there on your screen. Hallelujah. They're going to pull that up uh, there for you. Amen. Uh, we have the PayPal option. It's the paypal.me forward slash Charles and Defon. And we do not want to forget uh, that the power school, we want to keep pushing that because it's easy. It'll creep up on you. Hallelujah. And uh, we want to be faithful to that. Amen. Sign up online uh, at uh, psom.org. Uh, be faithful. Amen. Great things will come. Uh, you want to also go uh, cash app. It's the cash symbol. Uh, Charles and Defon. They're pulling that up on the screen now. Hallelujah. We have one other way uh, to sow uh, using the app option. It's the uh, Venmo. It's the at symbol. Uh, Dr. Period Charles hyphen and Defon. And for those of you that want to write it, write out a check online, you can write it out to uh, Christ Love Media, PO Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island 02907. Hallelujah! Have you all been blessed this morning? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah! We're gonna worship and let's be faithful. Amen. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your contentment shines on us, and we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your contentment shines on us, and we radiate your love. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your contentment shines on us and we radiate your love as we worship and behold your face the light of your content shines on us and we radiate your love you say as we worship and behold your Time. As we worship and behold your face, the light of your contentment shines on us, and we radiate you. Your goodness looks good on us. Your goodness looks good on us. Your goodness looks good on us, and we wear your glory. Where your glory. Oh, oh, you say your goodness looks good on us. Oh, 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 your goodness looks good on us. Everywhere, everywhere you glory. And we wear your glory. Everywhere you glory. You want to personalize it? Your goodness looks good on me, you say. Your goodness looks good on me. Hey. Your goodness looks good on me. And we wear, and we wear your glory. And I wear your glory. Come on, let's sing it up in the room. You say, Your goodness looks good on me. Your goodness looks good. So I know it's time to close, but for the next four minutes, I just want everyone to stand up on their feet and just go to someone and express God's goodness, how God's goodness looks to you. Before we share the grace, I just need everybody to stand up wherever you are in this room, wherever you are in this room. You want to come to the front and just express God's goodness. Now, this is a tip of the iceberg on what December 17th is going to look like. 
So you don't want to miss out that worship night. So, Pastor David, don't worry, I got the closing. Don't worry. But I just want you to go to someone and express how God goodness looks on you. Just take a look at yourself. You are so divine. Like you are. Hey, your goodness looks good on me. Your goodness looks good on me. And I wear your glory. And I wear, and I wear his glory. Everybody lift your voice and say, Your goodness looks good on us. Your goodness looks good on us. good on you his goodness looks good on you his goodness looks good his goodness looks good on you and you wear and you wear his glory and you wear his glory every day your goodness looks good on me And we see your glory. The grace of the Lord Jesus. Repeat with me. The grace of the Lord Jesus. The, Lord, the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Is with me now. And always will be. Amen. And you